Hello again and welcome to Ndu Dubai Fafa. My name is Fafa Gilbert and thank you very much for tuning in for another exciting episode. Now I hope you have enjoyed my trip to Ghana and the video because I did enjoy filming that. Uh, particularly uh, the marketplace. It was just so beautiful and clean and you know it was vibrant and I had to share that experience definitely. <laughs> so what have I got for you today? Even before I even cook today, right, if you haven't clicked that subscribe button yet or maybe you're waiting for that particular reason to click it, then yes, please do so because this is exciting. Definitely inspired by my trip to Ghana. Yes. <laughs> and if this is your first time as well, thank you very much for subscribing and you're welcome. Don't forget to click the notification button as well, which means that each time I do upload a video, it is delivered straight to your email address. And I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to Lumia Woman, that's Bertha, for dressing me up for this beautiful kimono and absolutely amazing dress. It just makes me feel like a woman. It makes me feel so great. She is a great designer and I'll leave her details in the description box below. So do check her out, definitely. I think you call it Adule. Yes, absolutely. And I can't wait. It's a popular Ghanaian snack and it's so good. But before I start, I have to enjoy my cup of coffee. Has to happen. <laughs> oh, I do enjoy the black coffee, and it's, I know it's like dark and rich and intense. And yeah, it helps me a lot actually go through the day, I guess. So, cheers. The story behind this recipe was a conversation I had with my mom when I was in Ghana. She was like, oh, do you remember this snack that you did like during your childhood? I was like, oh yeah, that corn thing, like adunle, yes, 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 yes. I was like, gosh, I've not had that for ages and I hardly ever see it in town as well. Mom was like, but you know, it's so easy to make, it's just corn flour and sugar, you know, you sort of... You know, you steam it and then you fry it and so I was like, oh yeah. They're like, you know, you've got breadsticks and they're just like corn sticks in that sense. They're gluten free and yes, it was so easy to make, apart from the fact that it's fiddly when you know you're trying to shape it. But yeah, I was like, why not? I would like to share this recipe with you guys. Yeah. So in honor of Mama, thanks for reminding me of an experience that I had <laughs> during my my childhood and yeah let's start cooking so to start off this recipe I am going to make something called a flatter so I'm adding about 200 grams of my corn flour I'm using pan here but you can't equally use the normal Ghanaian corn flour which is just dried maize or corn that has been milled um, but I'm using yet again what I have accessible to me so I've got about 200 grams of that in my saucepan and I've added two tablespoons full of sugar. Now, the amount of sugar you use, yet again, would come down to your preference. I try to cut down on sugar and if not, I hardly ever take sugar. But for this instance, I just want that little sweet taste, not too much. But you can increase the amount, that's up to you. So at this point, I will be adding 600 milliliters of water and you will notice that each step, it's measured. I'm adding a bit at a time because I need that beautiful single cream consistency for this. Now, the reason why I'm making that flatter is because corn is gluten free. If I was using flour, for example, the gluten will be activated, which means that when I do mold it, it is pliable and it's easier. But for me to achieve that with corn, I have to make their flatter. And in doing so, it's the same process that we do, um, especially the hours, and um, we do when we're making akbla. 
Exactly. So yet again, Aquila is a steamed gluten-free sort of um, dish that we have with our Ademe Dechi, Fetri Dechi and stuff like that. So it is the same consistency. But instead of it being a savory one to have with our savory dish, we add the sugar, fry it, and we end up with a snack. <laughs> so just add your water mix everything till it's well combined i've added some pink salt you can use any salt that's readily available to you and then yeah we're going to put it on our medium heat we're going to cook this gently and beautifully till it bubbles and it has that beautiful creamy lovely texture and look to it we're not cooking this for it to be cooked but equally we're gonna make sure that it's silky, soft, and beautiful to allow us to, you know, imitate that gluten texture for this dish. So now you can see it's thickening up just beautifully. Now I have used pan here um, because that's what I have readily available. But remember, if you're in Ghana, you can use the normal corn flour. So yesterday I spoke to my mom and I was like, mom, you don't believe what I've made. She goes, what? And I told her, she was like, what? She goes, you know the recipe, you have to make sure that you make that flatter. And because if you don't make that, then that's not it. I was like, oh, mom, I followed your instructions now. <laughs> so I was like, okay, don't worry. I'll send you pictures of what I've done. And then you can give me the seal of approval. She was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I sent it to her and I got the seal of approval. Yay, yay, yay. So I'm using a wooden stick, which has two flat surfaces. And it's quite important you use that. You can use your normal wooden spoon as well, um, but ensure that you use the flatter part of it, not the hollow part. Reason is you want to make sure when you're stirring, you're stirring the lumps away. So when you do add your dry flour to it, you have to quickly mix everything together till it's well combined, as you can see here. Naturally, you have to activate your core a little bit. It's a bit of an exercise and bicep exercise as well, as you do. <laughs> do bear in mind the way I am mixing this. You will notice that I'm using the flatter part of the wooden stick in moving the mixture to the edge of the saucepan and applying a little bit of pressure. This is to ensure that I break any lumps um, that, you know, because you want that beautiful, creamy, lovely, silky consistency. So each time I do add the corn flour, I mix it gently and then pull everything to the edge of the saucepan whilst I add my pressure. Now I'm just going to cook this mixture for about four minutes because I'll be frying this later. So transfer your corn mixture now into a bowl, absolutely, and I'm going to allow this to cool down. So of course I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of corn flour, now this is optional. The reason why I do it is to make sure that when I am molding it, it won't stick to my fingers as much, but as I said, it's optional. With that, I'm going to cover it with a cling film, and when I cover it with a cling film to ensure that the heat does escape from it. I will insert some knives. I'm going to perforate the cling film to create these little pockets of holes to allow the steam or the heat to escape. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so after 15 minutes, the temperature of my condo has reduced, which means that it's easy for me to touch. Now I decided to, you know, use the glove to cover my fingers to mold this jelly. It was just becoming all fiddly. Don't even know where that idea came from. So of course, I had to go and wash my hands till it was clean, absolutely, and you know, come back down to basics. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, sometimes you you try to do the right thing, and yeah, if it's just uncomfortable, you know, just go back to basics, as I always say. So now molding. So I added some corn flour. 
and I'm just going to mold this and roll this into almost like a cigarette shape. Um, so we're doing that whole stick form and all you do is mold it this way and using your fingertips or your palm and just roll it. So just be singing in your head, roll it, <laughs> roll it, oh nah. <laughs> until you have this beautiful sort of um, shape. Now I'll tell you, when I did the first one, it looked a little bit dodgy, but you know, you've got to be consistent, so, you know, and also you know, be pers persistent, more like it, not consistent. Because if you're persistent, you become consistent, isn't it? Charlie Mira, Pua Seunza. How do I even think that I could be a rapper? But you never know, you know? <laughs> if all fails, maybe I might try it. <laughs> anyway, so keep rolling, as I was saying, and ensure that you have enough flour to make sure that you get that perfect mold, as you can see here. Now, you want to mold it till it's thin, because when you fry it, you want it to be crispy, because that is something that is synonymous with the corn sticks. So I keep rolling, adding a bit of flour to enable me to achieve that. And you know, it gets better as time goes on, as you can see here. So I've placed my oil in a saucepan because I had less oil, so I had to use a small saucepan. And um, hence, that's why I cut the, um, the corn sticks in half. And I did heat the oil up for about five minutes on a medium heat. And I'm gonna keep that consistency or that heat um, through. Now, one thing is, if you decrease the heat, the corn sticks would soak up the oil. You don't want that. That's just like you just drink an oil. So it's important that you heat the oil on the medium heat for five minutes and then carefully drop or add your corn sticks to it. And now we're going to be frying, as you can see here. It's bubbling perfectly and now it's browning. So yes, I'm just going to turn around. Yes, to ensure that it even cook and um yeah this is it you know this is it so you will need your um kitchen napkin to ensure that you know you absorb any excess oil that comes out of it once you fry it so place your kitchen napkin in a sieve um and then when you fry it this shouldn't take more than about six minutes um but then again keep your eye on it you know when you're cooking you have to cook with your hearts as well you know you have to feel things you have to feel the texture so at this point i could feel that it was crispy and you can see it it's just beautiful and it's ready and um yeah here we have the ps de resistance look at this this is just a snack that your kids would definitely enjoy i love the simplicity of it you know it's gluten-free and it's just incredible place it in an airtight container um, I think I made it years back and I did serve it with some guacamole. It was just good. So yeah, perfect vegetarian snack. Yes, you know, <laughs> so I don't leave my vegetarians out too. Yeah. So yes, and I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Absolutely. Now, of course, it is important that once you finish cooking or whilst you're cooking, you're cleaning up. And I'm almost done here, yeah, so making sure that all my surfaces are just perfectly clean. I will leave the transcript of this recipe, including the list of ingredients on my blogs in dudubaifafada.blogspot.com as well as fafagilbet.com. Do check them out. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook as in Dudu by Fafa. Until next time, take care of you, be you, be nice, be beautiful. And guess what? I love you. Thank you very much for watching and do not forget to share and click the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet.